In this demonstration, we're going to talk about composite applications within the Cordis Business Operations platform. A composite application is a way of building a user interface or application to present data from multiple backend systems. That data could be internal within the business operations platform, interacting with a process, a case, a dashboard, etc. Or it could be external through the use of connectors, interacting with databases, mainframes, or any other system. In addition, we can consume external web services within these user interfaces to make a truly composite application. The advantage of doing this within the Cordis Business Operations platform is the speed and ease of use with which we can create these user interfaces, meaning anybody can create an application connecting to multiple disparate backend systems and display data from those applications in a single place. So let's get into the demonstration. Looking at the Cordis Collaborative Workspace on the left-hand side, we can see that within my project, I have a couple of business processes for customer orders. Um, I also have some database connectivity to my customer database, and I also have some external and internal web services. What I don't currently have are any user interfaces, so let's go and create one. Simply right-click, select New User Interface, and this will open the user interface designer and allow me to start building my composite application. On the left hand side in the toolbox are a number of composite controls. Uh, for example, I can take an input field, I can take a button, um, maybe something like a group box or um, an output field, etc. etc. And you can see how very quickly we can build up a simple user interface. We're going to select all of these and remove them for now. The other way of building user interfaces is having them generated dynamically or automatically through the use of web services. On the left-hand pane, I can navigate to my workspace, and here we can see the external and internal web services which we have. And underneath the internal web services, I can see a list of web services which allow me to interact with the customer's database. One of these is get customers object, which will allow me to input a customer ID and return details about that customer. To create a user interface for this web service or to make it part of our composite application, I simply drag and drop into the application pane, choose whether or not I require input and output user interfaces. I'm going to choose both. And when I say OK, we automatically generate the input and output screens for that particular web service. Once we have these screens, we can start to make some modifications. For example, do some resizing of the windows to make things look a little more tidy. And we'll just stretch this one down. We can also relabel the buttons. So we'll change this to search. And we'll change this to search customers. And we can also choose which fields we want to see here. So simply right click and select column chooser will allow me to choose which columns to show. So we'll just remove a few of these. And then we can see the user interface changes accordingly. One of the advantages in developing through model-based methods as we are here within a browser is I don't have to wait until I've completely finished modeling my form before I can review what it's going to look like to an end user. I simply hit preview in the top corner and save changes. And when the form is published to the runtime, it will show me a preview of exactly what it's going to look like to the end user. And in fact, it is also functional if I enter a company name and hit search. Then we are talking through the web services to the backend database and returning the details about that particular customer. We're going to add some more functionality to this form now through the use of a second web service. So I'll go back to my workspace. And if we look at our internal web services, we have another set of web services defined against a mainframe order system and there is a relationship between customers and the orders that they have. So let's look through this list of web services. And we have one here for get orders objects for customers. And again, as previous, I simply drag and drop this onto my user interface and choose whether or not I require an input or an output. In this case, purely the output. 
what happens as I try to do this is a relationship is recognized between the two sets of web services and those services are related through the customer's model. By checking the checkbox, I am saying I would like the forms to observe that relationship and therefore when I search for the customer, we will automatically be searching for the particular orders. We can now see the order group box which has been added to the bottom of the form and again if I simply save and preview we'll see what this form will look like to an end user. As we can see when the form loads we still have the search for customers, the customer information, we now have the order information at the bottom and if as before I search for a customer we will now see not only the customer information from the database but also orders relating to that customer from the web service talking to our mainframe. The next thing we're going to do is take this form one stage further by adding some external content to the form. In this case the content we're going to add is a Google map so I will simply go back over to my toolbox and within the list of composite controls I have one which is a Google map. Click on that and it will be added to the application. I'm just going to right click and change the layout of this application to free which will allow me to bring the Google map up to the top of the form so we can see it and we'll make that slightly bigger and then we'll also move the orders and over here and stretch this out so we can see the order detail. Again I have the ability to choose columns for this particular field so let's take out some of these and we'll take the order date. And what we can see now is we have a nice looking application with our Google Map. However, what we need the Google Map to do is display the address of the customer when we search for that customer. To do that, we need to relate the model, the customer's model, which we spoke about earlier, to the model of the Google Map. I simply click on the Manage Models button and switch to the Message Map view. And what we can see on the left-hand side is that customer's model, details about the customer. And on the right hand side is the model for the Google Map. And we can see that a number of these are common. For example, I can simply drag and drop country from one side and from the other side. We will take city, which in Google terms is administrative area. And we will take address, and that will be thoroughfare. And finally, postal code which will be postal code. What I've done is created a relationship between the customer's model and the model of the Google Map. We now say OK and again save and once again we can preview this application. And when the application loads we can see our Google Map. Again I'll search for a customer ID. I click search we should see the information from the database, the information from the mainframe, and the address centered on the Google map, which we can then zoom into, and is in Germany. If I change the customer ID, and again search, we get a different set of customer information, a different address from the Google map, and a different list of orders. The final thing we're going to do to this application is add some business intelligence around the order process itself. If I go back to my workspace, what we'll see within the project that we've been looking at is I have a couple of business processes. And one of those processes is the customer order process. And within the ship order activity, we have a KPI defined for the amount of time that particular activity should take. What I want to do is visualize that KPI on our form. So let's just make the Google map a little narrower and give us some room over here to put the KPI. To add this KPI to our composite application I simply drag and drop 
the KPI control onto the form and then move it to the correct place. Let's put it over here to the right of the Google map. And again, I can resize as appropriate to make everything look nice and tidy. This KPI can be visualized in a number of different ways. If I double click on the control, then we can see, for example, different types of graph or gauge that I can have. I can set color thresholds uh, for that gauge, etc., etc. And in fact, let's just go and set a lower limit of red and a medium of orange and good of green. What this KPI is going to show is the number of orders that are shipped within a two day period from the order being placed. So for the final time, let's save and preview our form and see how our completed composite application looks. As the form loads, we can see we have the search box to search by customer ID. We have the customer information which returns from our database. We have the linked customer information which returns from our web service talking to the mainframe. We have our external content in the form of a Google map. And we now have our management information in the form of our KPI viewer, which is going to show us the efficiency with which the orders have been shipped to this customer. So finally, let's see if this works. I'm going to search for a customer. When I click search, we get the information from the database, the information from the mainframe, the Google map, which as before we can zoom in on. And we can also see that we get, in this case, a KPI of about 89% against the set KPIs for order shipments. So in this demonstration, we've seen how we can very quickly create composite applications consuming services both internally and externally within the Cordis business operations platform, adding external content and business information onto a single user interface.